everybody, uh, Trey here. How are you? Uh, we're here near St. Moritz in Switzerland. Um, my friend Scott Cublin is holding the camera. Shake the camera, Scott. <laughs> See there. He responds to my command, so that proves that he exists. Um, so we could talk a little bit about these sorts of shots, right? These are great time for landscapes when the sun is going down and there's lots of mountains around and you're in the Alps and that sort of thing. It's a nice feeling. And you want to be able to, uh, you know, capture this feeling. And just like this video is being recorded on an iPhone, it, the video won't really do it justice. You know what it's like. Some place is very, very nice and you just can't capture on video or, or photo quite right. So, so let's talk about that. Um, so I'm set up here, um, and I, I change lenses um, to get two different feelings. Uh, this is a, a wide-angle lens. This is a, a 14 to 24. This is an Nikon, um, although it's pretty expensive, frankly. Um, and there's a cheaper one that you can do uh, really good work with. It's a, a Sigma 10 to 20. A lot of my early wide-angle shots were with that, and uh, it's a great lens. There's also the Tokina 16 to 24 or something. I, that's supposed to be a good one. I never used it. I know Ken Rockwell loves it and he knows his stuff, so that's another one to try. So anyway, the great thing about these wide-angle lenses in these situations is it kind of gets the sweeping nature of everything. Uh, there's a few things to watch out for, though. Um, like, go ahead and pan around. I'm sure people are tired of looking at me. Um, there's all of this action everywhere. Uh, the sun is just dipping behind those mountains there. Uh, where you see those four or five lakes in the distance there, that's the uh, St. Moritz area. Uh, we even have sunbeams coming in over here, about 90 degrees uh, to the right of you there. Uh, really nice, sharp, jagged mountains. Uh, the clouds are changing every few minutes. The, the clouds are starting to get this sort of uh, yellow hue. If you hold it up, it should expose from the sky and you can kind of see the yellow hue in the clouds there. So, you know, you need a wide angle lens to get all of this, but then what happens is the photo becomes about everything and not about any one thing in particular. And one of the problems is, is that if you look at these peaks over here to the right, zoom over on those, Scott, you can see that those are really interesting shapes, really nice angles very rugged and interesting, and they look nice with the, uh, the sun and the, the silhouetted uh, yellow light, golden light around there. And so the problem is with wide angle is that that gets lost. So you really have to uh, begin to uh, you know, learn or get used to switching lenses a lot. And when you take a wide angle shot, everything is so interesting you keep going wider and wider and wider because you think oh that's cool that's cool that's cool and eventually the shot becomes about everything and nothing no one thing in particular so I do grab these multiple shots I grab the everything shot so it gets everything and then I, I change lenses and get something more uh, zoomy to uh, get the details of the best shapes in the in this in this landscape because when you're here you should be able to produce um, you know 20 takeaway shots that you're pretty proud of. Um, you know, you're going to have one or two that are really stand out, but you should have 20 that you walk away with. And you really have to change lenses to do that. Um, another nice thing to note is that the sun, see where it is right now? It's, uh, it's behind some clouds, it's about to dip behind the mountains, and this is kind of technically the sunset or whatever. But if you have a tripod, you can stay out of here for another hour or two because the uh, light will stay amazing for quite a while. Um, so that's something else to look out for is, you know, when you're planning your time, you got to look at the sunset, you say, okay, it goes down at nine o'clock. Well, you know, you could be out there until 10, 30 or 11 shooting because the, the sky stays really nice. And really only after the sun goes down does the sky really start to change color and be interesting. Um, here's one other tip with this, um, with this wide angle lens here. And that is um, whatever's in the center is really tiny. 
and what's over on the edges gets really big and stretched. It's okay for these to be stretched outside because you're, uh, they're just mountains, and a stretched mountain looks like a mountain. Uh, so that won't be a problem. But the, <laughs> are you, you seem like you're shaking. I see you wincing back there. I'm just losing feeling in my fingers. <laughs> it is cold out here, man. It is really cold. Um, so watch out what you aim at with your lens. Typically, you tend to aim at the most interesting thing, but the most interesting thing will be the smallest thing. So try to push the most interesting thing to the edges, and that will grow big and nice and tall and long and be, be even better. So anyway, that's a few tips for you. I uh, hope it helps, and um, let me know if you have any questions.